Either you will get the education that is out here and you will tap into uh, being globally competitive or basically you're going to die. Four teenagers are charged with first-degree murder, among them one former student and two current students at Finger High School. Police say Darion Albert was on his way one home year. from school that made and walked the into a place in America for 113 people have been murdered in Chicago since the year began. 20-month-old Cole was shot to death in the backseat of a car. The victim Police of say two 18-year-olds were American killed after gunmen jumped out of a car and opened fire. So far, no one is in custody. They're calling for the National Guard to put troops on the streets of Chicago. movement to change the world, to change the world that we live in. It's almost like you need a Mandela, you need a Gandhi, you need a king, but it's not the men, it's the movement around those men. And the movement in 2010 for black people has got to be around education. Yo, Dick, what? Come on, yeah. what? What? Come yeah. on. Give me the fortune, keep the fame, said my man Lewis. I agreed, know what he mean, because we lived the truest lie. I asked him why we follow the law of the bluest eye. He looked at me, he thought about it, was like I'm clueless. Why? The question was rhetorical, the answer was horrible. The Black Star Project is a movement. Uh, it, it is almost an international movement, tapping into different continents, different people, different ideas uh, from all over the world about how to move people forward, how to move a community forward, how to change the world that we live in, and especially that certain people amongst us live in, especially for poor African American, Latino, Native American, poor whites. Uh, that's what the Black Star Project is. It's not a race-based uh, initiative. It is a excellence-based initiative for anyone who wants to tap into it. Uh, we concentrate on education, we concentrate on building families, building communities, economic revitalization. That's what the Black Star Project does. My name is Sister Africa Porter Olarbia. I'm a Black Star Project volunteer. I also am a parent university professor. I go out and teach different classes to parents and children. I participate in the student motivation program for the Black Star Project. I also am on the committee for culture and education for the Deborah movement. So we're here today from Chicago, the Deborah movement, because there was a tragedy that happened. A five-year-old young boy was killed by his father. We're walking through the community. We went right to where the young brother was brutally beaten to death by his father. The healing process has begun. The healing process has begun. The Deborah movement was started with the notion of all the violence happening all around us. Wherever black people are on the planet Earth, violence is happening everywhere. So we come together as mothers, as nurturers, to go ahead and we build, we structure, we galvanize, we organize our community. We are our own solution. I, I, was, born, I was born in public housing in the uh, city of Chicago, lived all my life in African-American communities, much of it in public housing. Otherwise, uh, you know, in the ghettos of 43rd Street, that's where I grew up. Uh, I started off by failing the second grade, having to repeat that. I was a mediocre high school student, flunked out of college, and so uh, I was probably a lot like most of the people who grew up with me, and I saw it with my eyes. I don't know how, but I did have an epiphany. I did have an awakening where I made a conscious decision. I ain't going out like this and I'm going to try to stop my people from going out like this. And so early on, I turned my, myself to education. I remember going to, the, after I had flunked out of the University of Illinois at Chicago, 
I, I was on the corner of uh, 43rd Street, and my boys were on the corner with me, and we, we was drinking wine, you know, what we do, and talking stuff that we talk and whatever. And then I told my boys, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to go back to school. And they, and they rolled me. They said, man, don't you see what, what school did to you, how they beat you down, how they put you right back? They said, don't you realize that, it, you know, school is not for us? These my boys tell me. Now, I could have bought into that right there. But I stood up to my boys on the corner, and I told them, I said, you know what? I love y'all, but I'm getting ready to go back to school, and this time I'm going to get them. <laughs> And so my boys, you know, so I'm thinking, you know, maybe they'll say, yeah, yeah, Phil, let's all do this. You know, one for all. You know how we do it. My boys told me, they said, so you want to be white? <laughs> I said, oh, man. I said, no, man, I, I don't want to be white. I, 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 they say, yeah, yeah, you think you better than us. I said, no, man, I don't think I'm better than you. I said, I just, I just know we got to get this education. I said, I, said, look at, I said, look at all of us. We, only half of us graduated from high school, half of us been killed out here on these corners. I said, man, if, if we don't try something different, there will be no future for us. There will be no hope for us. And they said, well, you're on your own. And I was on my own. I got a, got a degree in philosophy, studied the great European uh, philosophers, and, and I branched off into, uh, Eastern philosophy on my own, and, and so it made me think differently. Now, I was really out of place now on 43rd Street, <laughs> going around talking about Kierkegaard and Hegel and Nietzsche and, and Heidegger, but, but you know, but still I was always connected to 43rd Street. I had made it up in my mind, made it up in my mind that when I left the train, when my boy sent me off the corner that night and told me if I walked up to any mo, they was going to beat me down because I wanted to get in. I said, okay, I'm coming back. I'm coming back to 43rd Street. And when I come back, it's going to be different. Now, 43rd Street is, is almost mythical now. Because of gentrification, it has changed. But I still want to go where my people are and where they don't understand the value of education. Who runs the convenience store? Arabs. Yeah. Arabs. <laughs> Who run the restaurants in the community? Arabs. Arabs and the Chinese, Chinese, Chinese restaurants. Koreans. Who runs the nail shops? Koreans. 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 Who runs the gas station? Arabs. Yeah. The Indians. Yeah. Indians. Yeah. Yeah. Who runs the Dunkin' Donuts? Indians. The Pakistanis. Yeah. Who's cutting the grass? Uh, the Latinos. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And this is in every black community I go in. No yeah. wonder we poor. That's right. So now we got to figure this out. Because, oh man, I'm so nice. Where you get them from? Team sport. Team sport. <laughs> up, up on what, 47th Street? No, 66. 66. Who was who sold them to you? The Chinese do. Wait a minute. But I got a real serious question. How many Chinese people you seen wearing those? No. 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 See what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So that's what we gotta change our mindset. I'm not just talking about whether your child can do multiplication or algebra, or whether your child learns. Greek mythology. I'm talking about the education of life. Can we teach black men and black women to get along, to control their own economic destiny, to respect their elders? Mr. Kramer is going to take us through a, a ritual as to how we start here. And so, Mr. Kramer? Okay, normally we form a circle, we hold hands, and we do a prayer. Thank God for bringing us here together safely, giving us the, uh, the will and the desire to do the right thing, to stay out of trouble, to uh, uh, go to school, to stay in school, to stay out of trouble. Making your home the best school in the city, part of what I teach in the parent university is to make sure we're rebuilding our families and we're restructuring our families. 
it starts right in the, in the nucleus of the family before you even leave your house. Having a family mission statement. For us, I have a family mission statement right when you walk into my house. And uh, we decorated a frame to uh, put it in to make it even more attractive. But it's really my children and I and my husband, we sat down together and we wrote down the things that were most important to us and the things that made us laugh, things that, you know, we have fun doing together from cooking to reading, all the things that we like to do in our family, what makes us a family. And it has our mission, our purpose in it, and our value systems, how we think prayer is important, how we think that we should always be together doing a lot of things together. The lack of a comprehensive, structured response to the teaching of black children that basically the black community has fostered. We're the ones who don't demand standards. We're the ones who don't demand quality, who don't demand excellence. We're the ones. And until we do, it doesn't matter who teaches our children. And so there's only one solution. It is for black parents, the black community and black people to take control of the education of their children. I'm talking about taking over the building, taking over the administration, taking over the curriculum. You're going to have to take over. If you're going to make your home the best school in the city, that means that you're actually assisting the school. You're not giving your children to a school system. However, the school is just helping you with what you are already doing at home. So it, it's a relationship there. It's close okay. to that, so it's going to be different from what Dr. King is doing. Even though you made Dr. King The Perry University is a very, very, very unique program in that you utilize um, different professors, different people that are trained and skilled in certain areas from uh, financing, helping uh, parents understand better budgeting so they can understand saving and investing to making your child a better reader, to making the parents, you know, give them the resources they need so they are in a better position to work with their children themselves. Those who control the education of the children control the future of that race. And so my point becomes, well, who's controlling the education of our children? We've got another program called Take a Black Male to Worship. The best organizations at a kind of religiosity or, or getting people to commit to faith and at a kind of mentoring are the street gangs. The street gangs are outstanding when it comes to mentoring children, starting when the kids are two and three, teaching them uh, the names of the gangs, teaching them the colors of the gangs, by the time these kids are four, five, and six, they know the history of the gang. They know about all the old leaders of the gang, the founders of the gang. And by the time these same kids are 10, 11, and 12, these kids are willing to kill for the gang. The only way that we can defeat that is to have a mentoring organization of our own. And the, and the only way that we can defeat that gang doctrine is to have uh, uh, churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, counteract that with church doctrine. Uh, one of the best programs, or one of the largest programs that we have is the Million Father March. On the first day of school for the past seven years, we've brought out literally armies of men to schools in 500 cities where they basically take their children to school where they guarantee the protection of their children, where they encourage their children to succeed on the first day of school, and then they volunteer to work with the schools throughout the year. The ability to educate your child is inalienable. It is something that God gave you. God gave you that. Nobody can take that away from you. The ability to educate your child. You don't have to be smart. You don't have to understand everything there is to know about education. You only have to be committed to your child getting the best education possible so that he or she will be able to compete in this new global educational and economic ecology.
Universal, they be reciting my quotes while all the B singers hit bad notes. We rock the boat of thought that my man Lewis statements just provoke, caught up in conversations of my personal work.